Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope you're having a lovely day. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we're going to create three projects using the Hero Arts um, My Monthly Hero Kit for April 2020. Now this is April's. I had just received mine not too long ago. Um, Hero Arts is working so hard getting all of our goodies to us and I think it's just worth the wait. And um, I'm glad I, I was so happy when it arrived and I'm glad I get to share it with you. Now we're going to start off with sharing what's in this month's kit. You get a 6x8 stamp set and it's filled with probably every Australian animal you can imagine. There's alligators, land animals, sea animals, air animals, um, there's kangaroos, which they call joeys. <laughs> I just learned that. Um, a dingo is, I'm imagining it's like a wild cat. And then there's also a funny um, Tasmanian devil in here too. So I thought fun, fun little playful silhouettes. There are coordinating dice that will die cut out every single image in the stamp set this month. And then um, also included is a stencil. Um, this is a very pretty background stencil and the bottom can be waves or um, hillside which makes it kind of versatile. There's also some um, wood veneers. Now these are so neat. You get um, three of the five and a half by eight and a half sheets of birch press um, wood sheets or maybe it's just birch wood sheets <laughs> but they're adhesive backed and they're die cuttable and they are so neat if you like texture like i do on your projects these are so neat now these two are the cherry wood sheets they're not adhesive backed um i think when there's adhesive backing it adds a little more weight to them so the cherry wood kind of curled a little bit um but no worries nothing adhesive won't fix <laughs> so we're going to jump in and get started oh there's also a full-size pad of intense black ink too um, but we're going to do some stamping with that intense black ink. So I'm bringing in my mini Misty here and some white card stock. Um, in the stamp set, there's two trees. One's a smaller one and one's slightly larger. I'm going to use the smaller one. And then I'm also going to take the smaller kangaroo, um, the Joey. <laughs> you know, this, this set reminds me of Outback. I'm so sorry. We have a steakhouse over here called Outback Steakhouse. And every time the family goes to that steakhouse, we all talk Aussie <laughs> it's pretty sad actually but um we try to talk Australian well with the Australian accent how about that and that's what this stamp set reminded me of but I'm inking up my images with my brand new intense black ink pad and I'm going to do it a couple times because silhouettes you want to go over to get a crisp image a few times we're going to do it one more time because that tree has a little bit of open areas in there um, I also have, I not only did I grab the kangaroo, I also grabbed the um, Tasmanian Devil. I thought that was cute that they would be facing each other. So those are ready to go. We'll separate the dice in just a little bit, but we're going to do a little bit more um, stamping. This time with um, this little piece. This is like a, I mean, it could be so many things. It could be a, a hill, a rock, um, part of your ocean for your water animals. It's just really versatile. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to bring in some Distress Oxide inks. I have Tattered Rose and then I also have uh, Victorian Velvet. Um, I thought these two were very warm, um, but a little bit different. Normally you would do typical orangey, reddy, yellow skies and I want to do some, some, we're going to shake it up a bit with some darker colors of um, pastel Oxide inks. So I stamped first off with my tattered rose, the little hillside here. After I have it stamped, I'm lining up um, my paper on my grid mat here, and then I'm gonna mask off the image that I just stamped, okay? Next, I'm gonna take the same ink, and we're gonna add a little bit of color just below our masked off area. I'm using a post-it note tape, but if you have masking paper, you can do the same thing. Actually, any kind of um, washi tape would work too to mask off, but, um, I like the post-it note tape because it removes very easily. So I added a little shading underneath there so it was a little bit wider piece. And then I'm going to take my post-it tape here and we're going to go just under, I take that back, just over the, um, the area where we had left off. 
And then from this area, we're going to add our Victorian Velvet. Um, and I'm just using my blending brushes to add the ink. I went really heavy. I wanted it to be a solid image. You can see I have um, like a horizon line there. We're going to fix that by doing a little stamping again with that, um, that background scenery stamp here. I'm inking up um, that piece with my Victoria Velvet and then we're going to stamp it three times right along the, um, the masking paper. This way, when you lift it up, it's, it's another piece, but we have that little hilly side look in the background. To make it a little bit more uh, blending cohesive, I'm going to go over it with my blending brush, just kind of um, rubbing the, both of those inks together so it's a little bit more seamless. I'm going to go ahead and mask off the bottom area. And I'm using, again, using the grid lines on my mat, and then I'm going to take another piece of post-it note tape, and I'm going to go up just a half inch mark. Now, if you don't want to do this part, you could just put a strip of black cardstock. You'll need a half inch strip of black cardstock right over that bottom area, and it, that would work just the same. But I've never ink blended with my intense black ink. I've only had the, the little mini ink cubes, so I thought we'd give it a go. Um, you could see the oxide ink underneath the intense black ink, but it wasn't that noticeable. But it, it ink blends really well. So this would make a great night sky if you guys wanted, wanted to do that. I'm just darkening that color. And then once I'm happy with it, we'll just remove our post-it note tape. And then we should have three layers going from darkest is black, medium, and then light. And I think the color combination is just something a little different, but I really like it. Now I'm going to die cut out my background using a rounded corner infinity die from Hero Arts. This is the third from the largest. And we'll just tape this down and run that through the die cut machine. And then while I'm at it, I'll use the coordinating dies and die cut out my images also. I had um, a little bit of ink on the top plate of my die cutting machine, so when I die cut it out, um, from the last card that I made, the sentiment had transferred over to my um, my ta uh, tattered rose, <laughs> so I was smearing it, trying to get rid of it. Okay, now we're going to stamp our sentiment for my first card. I, I want to make a birthday card, kind of a, a, it could be a masculine with those colors, I suppose, but I, it says, Hoppy Birthday to Roo. To Roo. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking like Scooby Doo. Happy birthday to Roo. <laughs> Hoppy birthday. But I stamped that with my intense black ink and it stamps beautifully. Um, so my panel's ready to go. I already popped up my tree and placed it where I wanted it. I wanted the trunk of the tree to be just below my black line. Now for my background, we're going to cover the entire card front and I decided on using the cherry wood. The, again, the cherry wood. Um, panels here are not adhesive backed. So I'm going to be bringing in um, my double sided tape. Now if you, since this is eight and a half by five and a half inch sheet, if you cut it in half you have a card front size. So I just trimmed that down in half. We're going to add double sided tape and then um, just remove the release paper and add that to the very front of our card base. I love this wood veneer stuff. It die cuts beautifully and it's super neat. Okay, once we have our panel adhered, we're gonna, I thought we'd do something, See, I wanted to see if it would um, trim with my corner topper and it trims beautifully. So I rounded the corners on the inside of my card base and the outside over the wood veneer. And then um, we're gonna flip over our panel here add foam adhesive and adhere that to our card front. Um, before we adhere it though, I am going to add some natural colored twine, tying a bow all the way to the left. And then we can flip it over and add foam adhesive. Kind of keeping, I like the natural twine with the wood, it just gives it a little bit of an organic feel. Okay. Once that's adhered, I did add foam adhesive behind each one of my little Australian animals and we're going to place them facing each other just above the sentiment. And then after we have those adhered, last but not least, I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle. So um, 
these are clear um, confetti. This is um, moonshine uh, confetti sequins. These are from a previous kit from Hero Arts. Um, they don't have these in the shop right now, but um, any kind of clear sequins you could add to your card would work beautifully, I think. So that was card one. Now we're going to move along to card two. I'm going to bring in some frame dies. These are from Hero Arts also. They're called the Wood Frame Infinity Dies. And I took the two um, middle size pieces. I'm going to cut out a frame with the um, birch wood here and then also with the cherry wood. Now for the cherry wood, I made sure that my frame was centered. This way I can use it later on, the wood piece, um, the negative piece for it, for another card. But they die cut beautifully. Now these um, wood frames are uh, have, have detail in there. It cuts out um, detail and it cut through that wood no problems. I think it's really neat. Here's what you could do with the leftover pieces if you wanted to layer them together like this. I think that'd be a nice masculine card. So we'll set those aside and I'm just going to layer both of these together eventually. Since my cherry wood didn't have any adhesive back, we're going to add some, but um, we're going to add a little dimension by adding foam adhesive. So we're going to cut down some thin strips and place that behind our frame and then set these aside. Now we're going to work for on our background. I thought it for this card we'd stamp some alligators, some gators. <laughs> um, I'm going to bring in my shabby shutters, some more oxide inks, and then um, to darken up my gator to give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of dimension, we're going to bring in um, a dark green ink. And the dark green ink is, um, it wasn't peeled paint, it was forest moss. To add my forest moss, I'm going to use my finger dauber and just slightly go over the edge. You want to show you kind of angle your dauber. Um, so it's not straight up and down over your alligator. You don't want any harsh edges when you do your ink blending. You kind of want it flow a little bit nicer. And I found if you tilt your finger dauber, it works nicely. I stamped four of my alligators and then we'll just take that die and get that ready. And then while we're at it, we're going to stamp one of those little hills. This time we're going to be using another oxide ink. We're going to use scattered straw and I'm going to do a little blending, giving my little hill a um, um, little depth with vintage photo and I'll use the vintage photo with a finger dauber and again just going lightly over the edge at an angle so you don't have those harsh lines of the finger dauber and I have a piece of tape stuck to my finger I don't know if you caught that but <laughs> I guess that's a good way of me not losing it okay everything's die cut out now we're gonna go ahead and add our largest frame, which again is with the cherry wood. We're going to add that to the center of our card base. All my card bases today are standard A2 size card bases. We'll place this right in the center. You want to do this carefully because um, I think the birch wood has the potential to be very delicate. And so when you have it placed, you want to make sure that's where you want it. <laughs> now for the birch wood um, frame, you're going to very carefully remove the release paper and it removes very easily but the die that I had used um, the wood frame dies have again that those lined details in there so it made it extra delicate so I added that on the inside so my smaller frames recessed um, and my larger frames is popped up now we're gonna add our hillside we don't need those lines on the left and right of the hillside so I'm just going to use my scissors and trim them off. We're going to add some um, foam squares behind our hillside and place this on the very bottom of our frame here. Once we have this adhered we're going to kind of place our alligators. I know I want one full alligator on the hill and with the other two we're going to they're going to serve as double duty. I wanted to fill in an alligator filled background um, so I'm kind of placing them where I want them and then um, lightly tacking them. They're not down there good just yet. Um, I wanted to stamp my sentiment first. We're going to use vintage photo and we're going to stamp the sentiment right in the center here. It says I've got your back. <laughs> 
And then I'm gonna take my scissors and line it up on the largest frame and then just trim. And then this way I could lift up my, um, the front or back of the gator and then tuck it underneath that largest frame. Um, and then with the, with the front and back pieces that I trimmed off, we can add those as well. Just add another piece of foam adhesive behind there and then tuck them. So it looks like we actually stamped and did a little tucking with five alligators rather than three. <laughs> now to finish it off, I'm gonna use those same sequins. We're just gonna add a few here and there. And then that is card number two. Now for card number three, we're gonna use the stencil. So I have some white card stock. Um, actually, we're gonna use the stencil in just a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna take my white card stock and trim a quarter inch off of the top and the side. So I have a little bit of a border on my card base. I'm gonna use one of those rounded corner dies again. This is a smaller one. And I'm gonna place it a little bit to the top left and cut out my window. Um, after we have the window cut out, keep that centerpiece because that's what we're gonna do our stenciling on. I'm gonna lightly tack it down to my craft mat and then we're gonna bring in our stencil. I need to add a little bit of pixie spray behind it. Um, the waves on the very bottom were a little bit um, delicate. So I thought if we added pixie spray, it's gonna make it a lot easier to ink blend. So we'll just lift this up and I'll spray it off camera here and I'll wait a second for it to get tacky and then we can tack it down. For this panel, I wanted just a little bit of the moon in there, a little bit of everything. I wanted the, the clouds and the moon and the waves or it could be um, hillsides. Now for the top area where the clouds are, I'm using my shabby shutters. For the bottom area where the hillside is, I'm gonna use my tattered rose. And once that's filled in, I'm gonna carefully lift up my stencil. And then we have that section where the moon is. It's kind of an open area. I'm gonna bring in my um, scattered straw. I'm gonna dab off a little bit on the lid of my container and just do a light shading over my moon or sun area. And I just love the color combinations. Okay, I wiped off my surface. And next, I thought, we, this is the inside piece of our last card. I'm gonna trim down three thin strips of the cherry wood. Okay, and they don't have to be the same exact width. Actually, um, if they vary in widths, I think it looks a little bit more natural. Next, I'm gonna take my window panel here and we're gonna stamp our sentiments. I'm gonna stamp two of them. I wanted one, the good day mate. I'm gonna stamp that to the right of the window and then I'm gonna put Aussie you soon, which is so cute. It just makes you smile when you say that. I'm gonna stamp that directly under the window. And um, while I'm stamping, I might as well stamp. Um, one of my images, I chose the little koala in here. There's one koala that's on one of the bamboo sticks. Um, and then there's another solid um, koala. I am going to stamp the little bit larger one that doesn't have the bamboo. Stamp that with my intense black ink. I'll take the coordinating dies and just die or die and just die cut out my koala. Now with these little pieces, you want to make sure they're right side up. I'm going to flip over my window panel and I'm going to add some foam or my tape runner just around the window area. And then I'm going to place these sticks behind the window kind of wonky. If the more wonky that you place them, the more they look like bamboo. And that's what I was kind of going for. And I did, I wanted to keep the majority of these um, bamboo pieces um, to the right of my window. I wanted to eventually put my little koala in that corner. Um, now the back side has a craft paper um, on the wood piece. So you want to make sure that you have the wood piece facing up and the craft paper on the back side. Okay, I'm going to add adhesive behind my stenciled um, little square here. Before I add a foam tape, behind my frame, I'm gonna line these two up and then center them on my card base. And I'll press down my stenciled panel. And then that way, all I have to do is add foam adhesive behind my window panel and it'll line up perfectly on my card base. Perfectly centered, I should say. Now, after I got that done, um, my panda's arms were a little too long, so they were floating in the air. So he needs a stick to, um, 
to be holding or a bamboo stick to be holding on to. So I want to I cut out one more sticks, one more piece of the cherry wood, <laughs> and then um, I added a little bit. All these ones are popped up, but no worries. I'm just gonna glue this one right underneath my little koala's arm, trim the top of it off, and kind of lift it up and tuck it underneath my frame. So you can't even tell that that was added. <laughs> Now he has a stick that he's holding on to. I thought that looked nice. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna add those same sequins, just a few, filling in and giving it a little sparkle. And that finishes off card number three. So these are the three projects that I made today with the Hero Arts, my monthly hero kit for April, 2020. Um, it was so worth the wait. This is such a fun kit. Um, I love the sharks in there too. If I had the time, I would have made one with the sharks. Maybe I will later on, um, but such a fun kit. I hope this gives you some ideas on how to use it, and I hope yours are in the mail or you have yours, um, and this provides a little bit of inspiration. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I wish you a fabulous day. Uh, thanks so much for stopping by. We'll see you again real soon.